lesson 31, subtraction using compound complementary numbers in the ones column. So you're probably coming back here and feeling pretty confident, saying, yeah, I can handle this. My brain has stretched and it has grown. There's nothing you can throw at me that's really going to make me feel intimidated or weak or like I can't do anything because I have learned how to do the abacus, one of the most feared mathematical tools in all of his, well, maybe it wasn't feared, but not very many people know how to use it because it's hard. This is hard stuff and you're figuring it out and so you're feeling pretty darn confident right now. So you're saying, yeah, bring on the subtraction using compound complementary numbers. I have no idea what, what it's going to be, but I have my guesses and I think it's going to be pretty easy. A piece of cake for me because I can handle new things and hard things. All right. Let us do 13 minus 6. So set the number 13 on your abacus. So 13 minus 6. So think back to what we did using the compound complementary numbers in addition in the ones column. And I'm going to do just the opposite of that. Okay, since it's a 6 and the complement to the number 6 is 4 and 4 with respect to 5 is 1. So this time I'm going to take 1 away here, slide that little 5 down, and take away 1 in the tens column. 13 minus 6 is 7. Now, did you see the process there? See how, did you see how it was just the opposite of what we did with addition? All right, let's do the next problem. 14 minus 9. So set the number 14 on your abacus, and we are going to subtract from that the number 9. Now, I know you can do this in your head, a piece of cake, but we're trying to, to remember the, the, the whole reason we go through this strange way of thinking in the abacus is to mechanize, mechanize or make automatic the process of calculating on the abacus. That's the power of this tool. Is you don't have to think, count little digits in your head or anything or even memorize. You just, let, you just move the numbers you're supposed to move and the answer appears. All right, so the complement to the number 9 is 1 and 1 with respect to 5 is 4. So what I'm going to do is take all four of these away, add that 5, and take that away there. 14 minus 9 is 5. All right, let's do 12 minus 6. 12 minus 6. Hmm. All right, you know this answer. It go the, the process goes like this. Bing, bing, bing. 12 minus 6 is 6. All right, let's do another one. Let's do 13 minus 7. 13 minus 7. All right, so the complement to the number 7 is 3. And 3, so I go like this. I take away 2, add the 5, and get rid of that. All right, there it is. Huh, okay. 13 minus 7 is 6. Let's do a couple more, and I think you'll get it. Let's do 11 minus 6. 11 minus 6. Put the number 11 on your abacus, and we are going to take from that the number 6. All right. So the same thing. The complement of 6 is 4, and 4 with respect to 5 is 1. So I take that away, slide down that 5, and subtract that one there. 11 minus 6 is 5. So when we're subtracting, just get used to that sequence. It's almost like you're, you're memorizing a new set of complementary numbers when it involves a 5. That the 6 automatically triggers a 1, the 7 automatically triggers a 2, and the 8 automatically triggers a 3. And you'll recognize those. All right, let's try 14 minus 8. A 1 and a 4 minus 8. Hmm... The 8 automatically triggers a 3. Oh, 6. 14 minus 8 is 6. One last one, and I'll turn you loose on this. Here we go. 13 minus 8. 1 and a 3. There's the number 13 set on our abacus, and we are going to take from that the number 8. Hmm. 
even though the complement to the number 8 is 2, when there's a 5 in that, I know that this time it's going to trigger. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. 13 minus 8 is 5. So the key that you're seeing in all this in the abacus is to really get used to and just have it in your head when to employ the different techniques at different with different uh, combinations of numbers. When you see a certain set of number, you just know what to do, and your fingers just start moving the beads, and you know what to do, and it doesn't take too much thinking. And the only way to do that is just to do it a lot. The only, the only way to get used to it is just to do it a lot and you get used to using your numbers. If you want the abacus to really be fluid for you and so that your brain doesn't have to do so much thinking, then you just work with it a lot. It's almost like you're, you're thinking really hard a whole lot right now so that when you use it in the future, you don't have to think quite as much. It just becomes automatic. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, it's that way with a lot of things in life. That when you practice really hard at something in the beginning, and let, it's almost like you do all the thinking right then so that you don't have to do as much thinking later on. That's one of the things I, I like about learning the app because it reminds me of that principle of practicing hard right now so that in the future, something becomes automatic, and I don't have to think about it as much. That is the power of the abacus. Like so many other things in life that deal with learning and growing and stretching, that's what it is, is studying and learning a lot right now so that in the future it becomes automatic. I love that principle. Anyways, go work through some of these problems. I, I don't think they'll be too hard for you. You'll, you'll get this. Do, do about 10, 15 of them, however many you want to do, and come back, and let's practice comp subtraction using compound complementary numbers in the tens column.